Good evening, Ebenezer Bible Study, virtual Bible study. We want to thank you so very, very much for hanging in there with us uh, over a year now. But we want to also thank you, particularly with the Apostle Paul's Letters to the Church series. I come before you tonight because if you have been streaming on Sunday, if you have been watching Bible study, you have noticed that I've been putting on eyeglasses. The reason why I've been putting on eyeglasses is because I've been having some eye issues and some eye problems. And those of you who are part of Ebony's Amy Church family know that I have gone through some crisis with my eyes over 20-something years now. But recently, I have hit a bump in the road with my eye. And because of that, I am um, waiting to see what is the next step with my eye situation. So I wanted to come before you to apologize to having to do replays of uh, the Apostle Paul's Letters to the Church series. And so on tonight, as it was last week, we had a replay. And I don't know how long we will have to replay, but I wanted to apologize because I enjoy teaching Bible study. But I know my limitation when I go through the eye problem, and particularly this eye problem. So I'm asking for your prayers. I'm asking that you hang in there. I'm asking that if you don't mind, that you might listen to a replay of the Apostle Paul's letters to the church until I am able to do the work that I know that I so desire to do. And I love uh, teaching Bible studies. So I wanted to come to you to apologize. And until I can get these offer me again. Um, we are praying that it won't be too long. We will see you back at Bible study. I'll see you on Sunday, but I will, I will not be able to do Bible study until I have um, find out what the problem is. So keep me in prayer as I keep you in prayer. I love you so much and thanking you in advance. God bless you. We love you. Praise the Lord, everybody. We give God praise on tonight as we prepare to move in Bible study for our midweek service. We honor the Lord for you deciding to allow yourself to take a little break at midweek and be a part of this evening's Bible study. As always, we begin with the Apostle Paul's letters to the church series with thanking you, thanking you, thanking you, each one of you, for taking out uh, your evening, your Wednesday night evening, to focus in on a moment on the Word of God. I want to also thank you for those of you who have been committed and consistent and those of you who are doing your best and when you can tune in, you can and, and you will and we thank you very much. And lastly we, went, lastly, we want to thank those who are tuning in for the first time and we thank you for being a part of the midweek uh, service and Bible study that takes place here at Ebenezer Amy Church. Thank you for streaming for the first time or on Facebook Live. I made a promise last week, and I want to keep my promise, in that our Bible study persons, uh, I said last week that uh, Bible study will be shorter than what it has been in the past for almost a year. I am a woman of my word, and I want you to know that. I ask also, as we begin to have a word of prayer, that we keep Tiger Woods in prayer and that terrible car accident that he had on yesterday morning. And then this morning, uh, on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday morning, I heard, uh, no, this Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, I heard and read in my news app of James Burke, who was one of the uh, five star stair steps. And those of you of my age, we all loved Ooh Ooh Child. Things are going to get better. What a fitting song uh, for today as things are getting better. And we give God praise and we ask that you might keep that family and those persons who were connected to James Burke in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you on this evening to give you praise, honor, and glory for another Bible study night, a Wednesday night Bible study at Ebenezer Amy Church, the beautiful. We honor you, Lord, in our lives, and we thank you for the word of God that we can stand on, that we can uh, teach, we can assess, we can evaluate, we can apply to our lives. So as always, God, we ask that you be in the midst on tonight as you have been for almost a year now. We give you praise, honor, and glory. 
for the privilege and opportunity always to be able to serve you and to serve God's people. Bless every single person who is streaming or, or on Facebook Live that is watching Bible study on tonight. Bless their families and continue to give them what they need and the very desires of their heart. So now, God, have your way and move by your spirit. Anyone that watches on tonight that is not saved, that needs to rededicate their faith and join the church, they will do so on tonight. We bless your name and thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We come before you on this last Wednesday night of Black History Month giving God praise for the black church. But throughout our history as a people, before we teach tonight, it has been the black church that has informed us and our communities. It has been the black church that has blessed us and educated us and empowered us and mobilized us and politicized us and comforted us and fed us and directed us affirmed us and raised us and matured us and protected us. And it has been the black church that has given us our final blessings when we have transitioned from earth to glory. The black church has been the most significant institution in our communities. And we celebrate on tonight the black church. And we celebrate the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Its history, its hope, its significance and its role in the eradicating not only sin, but racism and sexism and social injustice in this country. We celebrated, I'm going to ask that the media ministry put up Ebenezer, a picture of Ebenezer the beautiful, the black church. And we thank God for the church. For it was the injustices and the racism in the white church that birthed the oldest black owned institution in this country and the world. We celebrate the founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, our own Bishop Richard Allen and his wife Sarah Allen. And we say thank you to our own bishop, Bishop James Lavert Davis and his queenly wife, Mother Arellis Davis, as our cutting edge servant leaders and bishop bishop and Episcopal supervisor of the second Episcopal district. We also want to thank our presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. Ronald E. Braxton and his wife, my friend, the beautiful Reverend Dr. and anointed Reverend Dr. Marie Braxton for their devoted leadership to pastors and ministries in the Potomac district. I give God praise also tonight for my beloved husband, my honey bunny, the senior pastor of Ebenezer Amy Church, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that rests on him for his gifts and his talents and his love to serve God and to serve God's people and to be a blessing to my life as my husband and as we serve ministry together and to the Ebenezer Church family as he served diligently and to the body of Christ around the world. I have rights to thank my husband. Yes, I do. And speak the truth about my honey bunny as he calls me honey bunny Jones. And I honor the anointing that rests upon him, his love for the Lord and the spirit of Christ that is in the soul and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to just say amen. Wherever you are, Ebenezer, just shout amen, amen. He was beginning, just for your knowledge, the Lent season teaching on Monday, March 1st at 6 a.m. Uh, the details of the schedule will be online and text. Uh, to the Ebenezer Church family. I also want to remind any sisters that are watching that on March 7th, we'll be having seven women praying and it will be a kickoff consecration service. You will be receiving information through text. You also will see it online. It is going to be a, an experience virtually, but it's going to be anointed experience. We want you to tell every woman you know, even if they're not a part of the Ebenezer Amy Church family, and that would be on March 7th, seven women praying here in this sanctuary in a very unique way in which the vision that God has given me. So please put it on your calendar. On tonight, we will be studying again from the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, which is the Apostle Paul's letters or epistles to the early church in an area called Galatia. 
it is believed that the Apostle Paul <clears throat> not only writes concerning immediate situations and concerns and threatening situations that we know that's how Paul writes his letters. He's always responding to an issue, to a concern, to something that is on his heart and mind. And because his writings were related to the human and spiritual needs and concerns of persons in biblical history, his letters have become timeless. The Apostle Paul had no awareness or presentment that what he was writing during biblical history, that his letters, his epistles, would be included in the Holy Scriptures and would impact our lives in 2021. What an amazing God that we serve that would speak through the Apostle Paul's writings for us on today. The Apostle Paul visited from my research, <clears throat> excuse me, the city of Galatia on his third mission trip found in Acts, the 18th chapter, into 23rd verses, if you would like to refer back to it on, on, at a later date. Most theologians do believe that he wrote his letters to the early church in Galatia around A.D. 55. We are in Lent season, as I shared on last Wednesday, and in this season, we want the Lord to stir up some things within all of us. In this season, although we still cannot gather here in the beautiful church house of Ebenezer, we still want the Lord to continue to challenge us. We, we want the Lord to continue to stretch us. We, we want the Lord to continue to shake us up in some areas of our lives on the inside so that we can be the best we can be as Christians in every area of our lives. Last Ash Wednesday Bible study on last week, we dealt with living a life by the Spirit. Tonight, this study will begin with what we need to do when we slip or mess up or see someone else that has slipped and messed up. So go with me now to Galatians, the sixth chapter, and we will start tonight's study by studying first verses one through five, and then we will move to six through ten, and that will be the conclusion of our study on tonight, starting with Galatians 6. 1 through 5, and it would be the NIV interpretations. Verse number 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him or her gently, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Verse number 2. Carry each other's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Verse number three. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, my goodness, he deceives himself. Verse number four. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to someone, somebody else. Verse number five. For each one should carry his own load. The Apostle Paul begins this chapter with recognizing that as Christians, none of us live our lives without having times of messing up or slipping up or doing something that is not in line with being Christ-like in our actions and our reactions. We all slip up, my sisters and my brothers, and Paul acknowledges that we not only slip up, but we have been caught. What Paul is saying is that in the slip, in the mess up, what happens, as one scholar wrote, it is as if like the last week of our weather conditions when you could be driving and not realize there was black ice on the road or walking or all of a sudden there is a patch of ice you may not see and accidentally slip and fall. You weren't looking to slip and slide 
on the road. You weren't looking to fall. You did not want to have a fender bender. You did not want to fall, but it happened. You regret it. You wish you had taken your time. You, you wish that you were more careful. You wished after the fact that you would have not even been driving or you would have been driving slower so you would anticipate it, the possibility of black ice. You wished, like myself, you had looked down because if you did, you would have avoided the ice patch. The Apostle Paul is saying that sometimes, we all, as Christians, slip up and get caught up in sin. If and if we do, and I dare say when we do, those who are around us should not be condemning our sin and our slip-ups. But we as Christians who know about the slip-ups, can we raise our hand, should be loving and kind enough to help and he uses the word restore the person. As Christians, we should not be judging someone else's slip ups. What we should be doing is helping to restore our brother or sister, not with harshness or being judgmental, for the truth is, there for the grace of God go myself. We should help to restore him or her, the scripture is saying gently. The word restore in the text read means to either, either remove the growth, the problem, or to mend the broken bone. This text means that as a Christian to help restore the slip up, uh, we should handle it gently with care and kindness and Christian love. As Christians, we are to be so kind-hearted that we do what we can with sweet reasonableness in helping our brother and sister who has experienced a patch of ice or their walk with the Lord and have slipped and have fallen or have had a terrible, sinful crash in their lives. Donnie McClurkin sang a long time back in the day the song that a saint is just a sinner who has fallen down and got back up again. The Apostle Paul is, is also saying that we cannot ignore or judge our brothers and sisters that have slipped in sin. What Paul is saying is that we as Christians need to always be sympathetic. I don't know about anyone streaming on tonight or on Ebenezer's Facebook on tonight live, on our live page, but I, I have had relationships and friendships where I have slipped up and I've, I've slipped up and instead of receiving compassion and understanding, persons have been insensitive and uncaring and judgmental. All of us have slipped up on the icy roads of life. All of us have slipped up and have sinned. So as a Christian, Paul in this letter is saying, we know someone that has slipped up. Restore him or her gently and with kindness. We step up and we help. We step up and we be there, for, we are there for each other. We, we step up and respond as Christ would respond. We open up our hearts, we open them up and we, we become sensitive, excuse me, and kind and, and caring towards anyone that has, that has slipped up and messed up and regrets their wrongdoing. We open up our hearts and make ourselves available with love. We don't judge, we don't have any rights to judge. God is the only one that judges. We make ourselves available to help and mend the brokenness and the regret. The Apostle Paul is resting in his writing of this matter, not on the wrong, but what one can do to help the wrong right. And in the regret of the slip up, 
be an instrument of healing in the Lord's hands. We as Christians should always be compassionate and caring and understanding. Why? Because, quote, there for the grace of God go ourselves, myself, and yourself, end of quote. That is what Paul is saying in verse number one. But watch yourself or you also may be tempted. NIV. King James says it, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. For therefore the grace of God go I. And, and that phrase often is used that is not in the Bible. We think it's from in, in the Bible, but it's not. I did my research. It is a proverbial saying used often that by Christians and was coined in the 1500s. As Christians, we have a responsibility to be the bearer of each other's burdens. We bear each other's burdens and problems and concerns. And as Christians, we don't celebrate the fall of a sister or brother. What we do is reach down and help them get up. In this Lent season, we are seeking to go into the inner soul of ourselves and, and let the Lord check us in the places that we may have dismissed or did not realize that we needed to change. The Apostle Paul then challenges the reader in verse number three, how you and I may feel about ourselves. The Apostle Paul is addressing the Christian who is conceited. Oh my God. The Christian who has spiritual pride. One who constantly compares themselves to others and their disadvantages of not being where they think they are spiritually in their walk with the Lord. One who feels that the Lord does not speak to anyone else but them. I call it, as you heard me say before, spiritual arrogance. There are Christians that see themselves spiritually superior to their fellow Christians. Not any of you watching, but you may know somebody, all right? When you are in the company of spiritually arrogant Christians, they, they normally will not allow anyone else's spiritual insight or input in the conversation. They, they spiritually monopolize the conversation. They tell you always that the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that and the Lord told me. When anyone constantly says that while in a conversation, it shuts the door, shuts the close of hearing that the Lord might have told you something. No one person has a monopoly on the voice of God. Also, the Apostle Paul is saying, do not look to someone else and where they are and feel like you have to have or be a one-up on them by comparing yourself with others spiritually and therefore trying to always prove yourself that where you may be spiritually is above others. No, no, no. What Paul is saying, what we must do as Christians, Christians is to look at ourselves and honestly be willing to admit our shortcomings and where we may need to grow or be strengthened spiritually. Conceit and a spirit of competition will not be in the equation, but honesty and love and vulnerability will be, will help us to continue to grow in the things of God. In other words, sometimes we don't want to look at these things, but during the Lent, we're going to look at the things that we need to look at so we can grow spiritually. Are you with me? In the process of becoming all that we are to be in this Lent season, we do our best to, to, be, to be our best in all things in Christian love. In both the second verse and the fourth verse, Paul addresses the necessity as a Christian 
to bear the burdens of others. Burdens come to all of us. Mm. Life as we know can be burdensome. Life experiences creates changes and an evolution of issues and problems we did not desire or ever wanted. We all know that as Christians. Whether it is in our personal life, uh, what has transpired over this last year, or in our childhood, or our family life, or on the, in the workplace, or in our health. Life experiences happen as Christians. Some of us have more burdens and, and problems than others. In the second verse, Paul is dealing with the burdens that life and living brings. And we are to help, meaning the weight of the burden is, is of such that we as Christians have a responsibility to do something to alleviate the problem. It is exactly what we have been doing at Ebenezer. And that is what we have continued to do by feeding our community and partnering with our county executive, Angela also Brooks and Prince George's County. A little sidebar, a shout out to our county executive, Angela also Brooks, who turned 50 years old on yesterday, amen? We are a church who has always done our best to bear the burdens, bear the burdens of our community that is needed for over 35 years. The pandemic was not the beginning for us. We have embraced and acted on the mandate by Jesus the Christ to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and visit the sick and visit the imprisoned. We are doing something to lift the burdens that have been brought on by living in the realities of the times. In the fifth verse, however, Paul is saying that each one should carry his own load. That's what NIV says. The King James Version says in that fifth, fifth verse this way, for every man shall bear his own burden. Biblical scholars agree, my sisters and my brothers, that that fifth verse refers to our own personal load and responsibility. There are actions that we have done individually that we are personally responsible for. That burden, that, that load is like scholars believe the backpack that a soldier has to carry on their own and no one else can carry that backpack but them. We must bear our own burdens. It is our individual stuff that we brought upon ourselves because of our own individual decisions and actions. It is our own individual, individual mess. It, it is our individual wrongdoing. It is our individual error. It is our individual regret. It is our individual sins. We must be personally responsible as Christians for our own sinful nature and wrongdoing and not look at someone else and point our finger or someone else's mess to convince ourselves that what we have done is not all that it really is in the sight of God. Are you with me? Paul is dealing with Christian conviction. Paul is forcing the Christian in the church and in Galatia and us on tonight to admit, to be aware and to embrace places in our walk that we may need to face and work through. That is what we must do in this Lent season. If we are to continue the journey of being all that the Lord wants us to be, we must deal with whatever applies to each one of us individually so that we can keep on growing in the things of God collectively. This Christian journey is an ongoing process. I've said it over and over again. It is dangerous to ever feel 
like that you or I have arrived. We are at the ultimate place spiritually. Lord, help us. Uh, that anyone could ever go. Lord, Lord, help us if we ever feel that way. Let us now move to Galatians 6, 6 through 10, and we'll be out of here. Amen? Verses number 6. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Verse number 7. Do not be deceived. Mm. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Verse number eight. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit, Spirit will weep eternal life. Verse number nine. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And then verse number 10, I'm sorry, verse number 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. As we step into verse number six, the Apostle Paul abruptly shifts into another practical teaching moment to the early Christian church in Galatia. And now he steps into their responsibility to those who are teaching them. One biblical scholar wrote, that he is now directing his teaching to what may be called, quote, the maintenance of the ministry, end of quote. Paul is instructing the members of the church in Galatia to bless those who were teaching them and encouraging them to share their material goods with their teachers. The Apostle Paul is saying to the early Christian church that if the teachers that are teaching you are speaking eternal truth, then share what you have to bless them. You see, in biblical days, and during those days uh, specifically where Paul was moving throughout the country Paul, uh, side, Paul had appointed elders to go to the southern region of Galatia, uh, found in Acts 14.23. And when he goes there, and he goes and sends them down there to Galatians, and in Galatians 4.23 you can read, Paul is reaching, uh, teaching, and instructing, and encouraging members of the church in Galatia to give something back to them that taught them. Then the apostle Paul shifts again, and this time he then gets up into a stern Christian reprimand. Now, before I get into what the Apostle Paul is addressing, let me interject again that the Apostle Paul, in his letters, when he's writing, oftentimes um, he, he will move from one thought to another without any connection. I've said that to you before, and I need you to grasp that, grasp that, because what you, what you hear in his readings is that in the teachings, oftentimes, as I've shared, there's this disjointedness of thoughts or issues or, or concerns. And so in verses 7 through 10, it is if the Apostle Paul remembers something that the early Christian church members either had done or it was told to them that was not good and, and it bothered him or he need to reinforce it or he need to reiterate it. The Apostle Paul now shifts in his writings from telling them to bless their teachers, <coughs> excuse me, to again deal with what we dealt with last week, and that is man's lower side of his nature. Paul is saying that if we as natural and spiritual beings allow our lower side, and we talked about that last week, our flesh side to dominate in our Christian walk with the Lord, the outcome 
can be a host of possible problems, troubles, and consequences. But if you and I, both of us, you and I, all you watching, you and I, are willing to take, as my mother would say, the high road. If we are willing to sow, to plant, to put in, not to our flesh, our lower nature, but to sow in the spirit, our higher self, our higher nature, and to let the Holy Spirit be our guide and direct our lives in our walk with the Lord, in our commitment to the Christian faith, we cannot take God's request and his requirement of us as Christians for granted and think that our sowing and yielding to the flesh, the lower self, that there will not be any consequences and the possibility of the outcome, outcome becoming devastating and disastrous. But the Apostle Paul is saying that if we are willing <clears throat> to let the Holy Spirit guide and control our lives down here, we will reap a harvest, not only down here, of blessings, but ultimately be rewarded with eternal life. Paul reiterates this again. I've said this before. We must live our lives being aware and cognizant always of what is required of us, and that takes work. For what we sow, we will reap. Now, my sisters and my brothers, here is where the revelation of God uh, wants to speak to us all. We have an opportunity through Jesus Christ for the wrong on our slates of our lives to be wiped clean. We have an opportunity to turn our face towards God and allow the Holy Spirit to direct and guide us and clean up our lives. The embracing of this opportunity to sow in the spirit and reap a harvest of blessings in our lives generally does not happen overnight. No, no, the sowing and the reaping process and concept takes time like a seed in the ground, it has to germinate. It takes time to grow in the things of God. It, it takes time through the ups and the downs. It, it takes time in the mistakes and the mess up. It, it takes time in the responses and the regrets. And it takes time in the seeking and the searching. And it takes time in the speaking and in the silence when we don't hear from God. And it takes time in the wrong ways and then the turning the right way in and then the awakening. It takes times when the, the no's and then the yeses and it takes time and takes time and it takes not that this is the way it's going to be always. It takes time over here and it moves over there and it, it takes what time and, and, and it should have been but I did not but I'm trying to get right. It, it takes time and, and I get it now but I did not get it before. Begin tonight, if you will, if you have not been sowing and you've been sowing in the flesh instead of the spirit, deny, decide tonight to sow into the fertile ground of the Holy Ghost and watch the Lord begin to change things and bless you and you begin to reap a harvest and all that the Lord has in store for you began to be released from glory. Blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. We all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Let me reinforce this point and we are near end of the study on tonight. We are all spiritual beings and we have a responsibility to always restore someone else that has messed up. We cannot sit in a seat as we journey 
of judgment. That's where Paul shifts to. Or spiritual arrogance. We must with love and kindness gently help our brothers and sisters who need to be restored. And lastly, let us not become weary, Paul talks about it, in our well-doing. Even though some who are streaming on tonight might be a little weary right now. The Lord wants someone watching tonight that is faltering and feeling weary in your well-doing to not give up on the Lord. Things are shifting. We feel it. Things are changing, but we're still not there yet. For the Lord has promised, and we will be assured that if we keep on doing what we are doing that is right in the sight of the Lord. If we keep on giving in the way that we as a church family are giving, if we do not give up, if we do not give in, the Lord has promised that in our doing, in our doing good, to the body of Christ, to those who are in need, the Lord himself has promised that we will reap a harvest. Hallelujah. If we keep on serving, if we keep on giving, if we keep on blessing others with our resources, if we keep on helping, if we keep on reaching and pulling someone else up, if we keep on doing what we have been doing, there is a promise from on high that the Lord will continue to take care of us. The Lord will continue to provide for us. The Lord will continue to keep us in his care. The Lord will continue to bless you and I's going out and coming in. The Lord will continue to keep us in the very hollow of his hands. The Lord will continue to bless us individually and collectively. And if we keep on letting our higher nature uh, be connected to the Holy Spirit and for it to help us to be all that we can be, the Lord will change our story. If it needs to be changed, if the Lord will just keep on erasing our sins, the Lord will give us a renewed life. The Lord will continue to work miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives. I know he can because he did it for me a long time ago. The Lord will give us an opportunity to change our narrative about ourselves. The Lent season is always an opportunity for us to go inward, to let the Lord to reveal to ourselves and reveal himself to us the truth, and where we need to change. And there is a place in our narrative of ourselves that we can admit when we go in inward and he reveals to us that it needs to be changed. The Lord is able, if necessary, to change our stories. And what your story used to be it will and can be changed. God is changing our stories. And after Lent, those of us, I can raise my hand, that may need our stories to change a little bit, it will be a brand new story. It will be new and you and I will be brand new Christians in Jesus the Christ. The old things shall pass away 
and we all shall become brand new in him. Come on, Jesus, and change our stories where they need to be changed. This is the Apostle Paul's letters to the church series. Wherever you are, would you give the Lord a hand praise and just shout, I need my story changed. Wherever I need my story to be changed, change me, Jesus, because I want my story to be changed. We give God praise on tonight. We honor the Lord for the word, and we give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory on tonight. We are making an appeal to you that if you're not saved, if you need salvation in your life, you need your story to be changed. You've been going down one track, and you know you need to go down the track of Jesus to Christ. We pray that you make that decision on tonight, and then there may be someone who needs to rededicate their faith unto the Lord. We pray that you made that decision that you just say to the Lord, Lord, I, I want to rededicate myself unto you, God. I need, I need you to change my story, the narrative of my story. I need you to change me. I, I know that I'm not where I would love to be in you, God, so do that for me. And then if there's someone who doesn't have a church home and you want to be in the fellowship of Ebenezer the Beautiful, Ebenezer the Church, Ebenezer Amy Church, we, we, we love to be your pastors. Pastor and I would love to be your pastors. And we want to say thank you in advance for making that decision. You can go on, on my and you and a minister would get back in touch with you. And then lastly, we pray that you plant a seed, an offering, that you would give an offering on tonight. It's Bible study night. So we ask that you might give an offering to the church. There are the various ways up on the screen in which you can give. There's so many various ways. You, there are so many ways you can give them online, and then you can even mail it in if you so desire. Just put on your envelope for Bible study, and we give God praise. And thank you in advance uh, for your giving. And so at this time, at the close of Bible study, we will see you next week, Lord willing. We thank you so very, very much. We're going to ask the media ministry to play a little bit of Ja'Kalen's car song. God is changing your story. God bless you. We love you. Let's, let's have church. You believe that he's changing your story. I want to release this in the atmosphere. I know you've been defeated before. Mama. Wherever you are, give him some praise. Won't be your story no more. Woo! Let us know, to Taylor. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Bye bye. Woo. My Lord. Sing to Kayla. Bye bye. Yes, he is. God. Yes, he is. Woo. Yes. Miracle. Come on, Jesus. Change it. Change it. Not bad. Yeah. My mind. From defeated to winning. We give God praise on tonight. God bless you. We love you. We will see you next week. We miss you, Ebenezer. We miss you. 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 We love you very much. God bless you. Remember, God can change your story if you allow him to do so during this Lenten season. God bless you. We love you.
Our 2021 Women's Season Outreach activity is fast approaching. Help us to continue to be a blessing by supporting this important effort, benefiting two organizations. You can participate by donating funds to help in the purchasing of gift cards that will support St. Anne's Center for Children, Youth, and Families in Hyattsville, Maryland, in supplying household and personal items for mothers and their children, and Shepherd's Cove Women's Shelter in Capitol Heights, Maryland, in assisting in their kitchen and pantry makeover. Simply go to EbenezerAME.org and click on Give. The deadline for donations is Wednesday, May 5th, and cards will be distributed May 7th. Please indicate Women's Season Outreach when giving. Let's continue to show God's wonder by showing His love. Sisters, it's almost here. A powerful and life-changing weekend. The 2021 God is a Wonder Women's Spiritual Retreat and Restoration Conference. The virtual experience. Friday, May 28th and Saturday, May 29th. Experience two full days of workshops, worship services, and interactive sessions, all on a unique and interactive platform that will make you feel like you're in the sanctuary while at home. Workshops and preaching from incredible women of God, like Reverend Dr. Claudette Copeland, Evangelist Dr. Susie Owens, Bishop Carolyn Showell, Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart, Reverend Jazz Schoolark, Reverend Marissa Farrow, and many, many more and music from guest artists Kathy Taylor and Kiara Sheard Kelly. You'll also be able to visit our virtual prayer room and explore our virtual vendor marketplace. Registration is only $36, and you can register today at GodIsAWonder.com. Sisters, we all need time for retreat and restoration. Whatever you do, don't miss God's wonder on May 28th and 29th. For more than a year, while the church building has been closed, the work of the church has not stopped. Because of your faithful giving, our brothers and sisters in need have been blessed through the distribution of over $400,000 in grocery gift cards and regular food box giveaways. And our ministries continue to meet and serve the diverse needs of our community through outreach to support the homeless, our elders, and others through serving as a mobile vaccine site and distribution of health and other resources and more. None of this could take place without your giving. And with your continued help, we will continue to minister to the various needs of God's people. To support this important work, go to our website, ebenezerame.org and click on Give. Donate through the Givelify or Tidely apps. Please select Ebenezer AME Church located at 7707 Allentown Road. Or you can text GIVE to 833-702-0241. Or you can even mail your contribution to Ebenezer AME Church at 7707 Allentown Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, 20744. As you give today through your tithes and offerings, we want to thank you. And we pray that you will partner with us as we continue to be Ebenezer, the family church serving the family of God.